now um it's just have given a few examples if you have not known that you can see the first sequence you can see the difference here is two here is two here is two here is two it's ap here is zero here is zero here is zero again it's ap here is minus four minus four minus four again it's ap and now in this you will see here is a difference of zero here is a difference of one here is a three here is a two so it should be constant just one so it is not an ap now we are having uh, our an array of n integers so we are we having an input uh, let's say nums and we also have two other arrays uh, of size m which is l and r now this l and r are just a range array which means for this m array of length m l and r is just representing i have let's say m queries and for every query i have a range l to r so please just go and find for this range to l to r if that is an ap or not that's the only thing which it has or it wants us to find out cool so again uh one thing which while reading this statement this line itself should come to your mind is shall is it possible for me to actually query which means i have let's say m queries m queries and for ev every query like he go he says and he will give me a range l to r i will go and ask if that is possible to actually get that range l to r so again i should actually ask is it possible for every query i individually go on my input and check for the answer so is it possible to have a roughly of m n or something maybe small k something like that to actually go for every query is find the answer is it possible or not that is if i want to ask me i'll go and check the constraints m is 500 n is 500 so roughly that is possible m into n matlab for every query i can actually go into my input and check so i don't have to think of very something very smart if something mediocre would also work now ultimately we have to return the list of boolean elements answer just saying that answer of i is true if the sub array which means from l to r that sub array in nums is actually a arithmetic progression when it is possible to rearrange it so the constraint is that okay i can actually rearrange it we will see an example with we will see by this example itself but yeah it is given that we can actually rearrange it so first very foremost thing as we saw above that we don't have to think of very something very smart simple thing will also work because we can actually go on to every query and get the answer from every query itself so i know that okay this is my input looking like i know that i have these three queries with me right so for the first query which is from zero to two i know the elements I have grabbed the elements out from that uh, input array itself for the first query because I know it will work because I know for every query I can actually grab out the entire elements and then work on that work, like work on these elements. So I've grabbed out the elements from 0 to 2. Now again to make it as an AP as you saw AP is nothing but it can be increasing it can be also decreasing but you know that okay your elements are rearranged your elements are rearranged for example in this case if i say okay rn you know that this ap is decreasing i will say wait a second i can also make this ap by rearranging as increasing minus nine minus five minus one and three so for sure you know that in a ap it is either increasing decreasing or constant so anyway if i just sort this all numbers down so for sure they will be in an order and if i just take one sorting let's say i will just sort increasingly so for sure it will ultimately everything will sort increasingly this also this also and this also this will help us to maintain that the difference will remain constant as if it is if it is possible to remain constant it will remain constant so with this we can just make one thing sure that i just simply sort this input out which is for the query so what i did here was i just simply have this input 465 i just sorted this out again you can just sort in ascending order or descending order it doesn't matter the sorting will just help us to place the every element as close to each other as possible so that the difference between them will remain as close to each other as possible which will help us to compute that okay if it is a constant difference we are good so what we do we sort it four five and six you can see the difference is one it is one so ultimately i'll uh, firstly we grab all the elements in this range from uh, the query l to r which is to zero to two when we have grabbed it we will actually apply the sort function on this uh, grabbed input which we have grabbed for this query when we've applied the sort function we will start from i equal to one and keep on checking the difference which means i minus one index i'll just keep on checking what is the difference i maintain it as a d and i'll make sure in my entire array which means for i equal to let's say two 
टू आई इक्वल टू वन आई जी चेक ओके वॉट्स अगेन द डिफरेंस एंड इट शुड मैच विद द इनिशियल डिफरेंस सो द डिफरेंस एवरी टाइम इन साइड द स्क्वेर शुड रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट इफ इट इज कॉन्स्टेंट अल्टीमेटली विच मीन्स इफ इट इज सेम अल्टीमेटली आई कैन रिटर्न अ ट्रू इफ इट एंड एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इट इज फॉल्स विच मीन्स इट इज डिफरेंट और आई गेट मल्टीपल डिफरेंसेज इट इज नॉट एन ए बी फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस केस आई गॉट इनपुट फ्रॉम जीरो टू थ्री आई गेट आई गॉट एलिमेंट एज फोर सिक्स फाइव नाइन आई सिंपली सॉर्ट इट डाउन फोर फाइव सिक्स नाइन आई गेट द डिफरेंस इट इज वन आई गेट द डिफरेंस इट इज वन ओके आई गेट द डिफरेंस इट इज थ्री डिफरेंस शुड हैव बीन वन और आई शुड से इट शुड इट शुड हैव रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट but it changed oh its answer is false simply mark a return of false in this ultimately for here itself i just have a 2 to 5 query i just simply sorted it down 3 5 7 9 here two here two here two okay that's a true return a true simply as we saw above itself we will go on to all of our queries right m m queries now for every query i just grab out the output grab out the input itself to actually apply my sorting thing on what input so i'll just go and find okay l to r l to r just grab out the input in a arr array now i have the arr array having only l to r elements now i'll just go and check is that l to r range is actually a ap or not after rearranging that so what i will do is i'll just simply again as i went on i just simply sorted this stuff out because i know that uh, with sorting i will have every element as to each other as possible to actually maintain and help a difference thing for me now i'll just firstly get the initial difference and i need to maintain this initial difference up till the very end so i'll just start off with the next elements i'll just go and find the differences of the next elements if it is not equal to the initial difference which i have found out which means i have found a new difference which is not possible i should have only one difference in the entire ap so i'll simply return a false ultimately i try everything i match all the differences with the initial difference ultimately i return a true with this you know that you can simply get this solved again the time will be for every query you are extracting out the entire array as an arr and that you are sorting that arr array so it's a o of m into n log n and space is o of m because you are extracting out the arr array and that can be of size n ultimately like worst case so time and space is o of m into like the, the is m into n log n and it is n can you optimize it maybe maybe not uh what do you, what do you think what you can optimize you can think of one thing okay uh you can extract out the element maybe you can just uh, do inside this range itself maybe you don't need to extract out the element that is one thing you you, you can for sure optimize that you don't need to extract out the entire array itself you can just uh, check in the input array but although you, if you will apply the same operation here you might be modifying the input array so but here in this case i will not modify the input array but yeah this is one thing which i can actually optimize that uh, if by any how i don't modify the input array but i can just check in my input array itself what is l to r and what are the elements in that range maybe i don't need this space extra and also one thing that okay i was just sorting this stuff out right so what if i don't sort this stuff out maybe without sorting itself i can find out because you know that okay it is a sequential thing a a plus d so i know what is expected behavior it needs to have so can i replicate that expected behavior let's see so ultimately do we need sorting that was a question because ultimately that was a boiling point for us ultimately we cannot just do some hack or something that we can't we have to go to every query and for every query i have to go to the entire range itself of that for that query it, it can be different i can't just do a pre computation of okay for this part it is this like for example in sparse table and in in victories we have seen that we uh, pre compute some part for the for the portion of the query we can't do something like this here itself so uh to remove the sorting we would have to find what should be the output and then we can replicate that in our in our input itself so we know that okay after sorting the array ultimately looks like a a plus d a plus 2d a plus 3d which is a plus m minus 2d it should have looked like this because it's a standard ap now if i want to look it like this let's see the first the same example which we looked earlier this was my input this was my query now for this query which is like the same thing i wrote here it should look something like this now this represents after it is sorted it represents that it is a minimum element it is a maximum element i just wrote the same thing now minimum element maximum element if i want like what's what's a very what's a very variable for me i know the first element because it is the array right it is the array i know the array i know the exact array i just 
don't want to sort this error down why because ultimately why the sorting was required just to find the d itself that okay if the d is constant or not the d is constant or not so the ultimate goal to sort was to find d rather if i can find d now itself and then go and check was it much beneficial like it is much much beneficial right so that is what i will do i will rather sorting this down i'll just go and find the minimum element which is four maximum element which is six now i know the minimum element maximum element with this minimum maximum i'll just subtract this out i'll cancel the a maximize minimum i'll get a n minus one d i know n the, the size of the entire array because i know l n r so i know the size which is actually r minus l plus one so I know the size of this entire array. That's that's very 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 cool. So I can just easily go and find a D from here itself, which is maximum element minus minimum element upon n minus one. With this, I've got the D. Great, you have got the D itself. Now, when you have got the D, it's no issue. Now you can just start off with the minimum element itself. What's the minimum element you have here? The, here you have minimum element four. You know that the D for you is actually a one. So you know that the next element will should have been a five. I'll just just take, keep an unordered map or an unordered set or a hash set in Java just to keep track. Do I have a five in this input array or not? Do I have like, like next time I'll just grab out for a six, but six it has already reached the end, so I don't need to ch ch check for it. For example, in this case, when I will get the minimum element five, maximum element is nine. I know that D is actually a two, so I'll just go and check five is it like do i have a five in here which is actually three plus two do i have a five in here yeah i have okay bro cool do i have a five plus two in here yeah bro i have do i have a seven plus two okay it, it has already reached the end so no need to check it so with this i am just finding the next expected number which is actually if it is a current element so next expected number is current plus d i'm just trying to check that number and if that is available bro great just get that number out and simply return or like simply get that okay i then the next expected number was five it is present great move ahead check what's the next expected number if it is also present move ahead move ahead move ahead at any point of time if any number expected number is not present return of false let's quickly quote this up again in this in this in this we can actually optimize the space also like here in the in this case we are actually making the entire new array although it's a follow-up for you itself just to optimize the space which means whatsoever i have given here whatsoever i have given here just use this entire input array itself so don't copy the entire array just use this because you are not modifying the input array for sure right you're just using your l and r ranges you're using your l and r ranges so the follow for you guys is i'll just modify the above code itself but the follow for you guys is just don't modify this input uh, the the just don't make this new input array rather use this array itself go and find the minimum the maximum go and find what is the d when you have found out the and for for this array minimum minimum maximum just open an, an operation you have got the minimum you have got the maximum you have got the n which is r minus l plus one you have got all these three you have got a d now just keep track of these elements l to r in a hash set but oh aryan keeping a hash set will actually take a space of o of n yeah that will but ultimately earlier your space was used twice o of n and o of n o of n for making a new array and o of n for the space itself but now only o of n would be used for this space so ultimately it will still remain o of n as a space but you can actually you don't need to make a new array itself so that can be a follow-up for your interview like he might ask okay how can you optimize the space itself not required like it will not reduce the complexity on numbers but it might actually reduce the, com com the actual complexity of the program cool let's quickly code this up um so what we will do is we will simply just modify this previous part which we have seen uh just sorting it out so rather sorting uh we got to know that we want to find the maximum element we will initialize with int min we want the minimum element again we will initialize with uh, int max and you also saw that uh, we want our entire and yeah again uh ultimately the complexity for this program which we have seen is actually o of m into n m for query and n is just because we are not simply we are not doing any sorting or stuff space is o of n again this space o of n as i showed you just one thing is because of the array which you are making and other was the unordered set you are making 
the follow for you guys was to actually not use this and only use the input array itself but we are modifying the input code but yeah again even if you do this still you will be using O of n space because you are using an unordered set to actually keep track of the elements in the range l to r cool uh, now going back we will have a ar dot size uh, then i'll just simply go back on all of my elements because i need to actually update my uh, minimum element and maximum element so i'll just say uh, minimum element is nothing but minimum of uh, minimum element and this element and same goes for maximum element it is nothing but maximum of maximum element comma this element now uh, i also need to keep track of all the elements in this so i'll just have an unordered set now in this unordered set i'll just keep track of all the elements because ultimately you saw right i want to know all the elements in this range l to r which is the arr array for us so i just insert this element now i have got this uh, now i want to find the d d is nothing but as i showed you maximum element minus minimum element divided by n minus one but uh, what if it is not even visible uh, like visible so just have a quick check that if uh, maximum element minus minimum element mod this value which is n minus 1 if it is not equal to 0 bro sorry it is not even possible to divide what are you doing it is not possible to divide now you will just find the next current element which is actually your minimum element plus d and just you will just keep on checking that while your current element is less than equal to your maximum element just keep on checking if that current element is in your set or not so i'll just check that if s dot find uh, this current uh, if it is equal to s dot end which means it is not in my input set which i have made so simply return a false else uh, just simply keep on updating your current with the d and ultimately if still it never goes to false which means it's a true simply return a true let's quickly check if it works um yep so yeah that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.